Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Since so many of you have asked me about my setup, I wanted to make a quick video about the VS Code extensions I'm using. So for Python, I use only five extensions. It's simple and minimal, but allows me to be really productive when I'm writing Python code. So let me show you my setup. And by the way, if you don't know about this editor, then here's a quick overview. I'm using Visual Studio Code or short VS Code, which is a free editor from Microsoft that's available on all platforms. Just go to code.visualstudio.com and then download and install it. And one great thing about VS Code is that you can customize it and add new features by installing extensions. After the installation, you can open the editor and then open the command palette by pressing Command, Shift and P on the keyboard or on Windows, Control, Shift, P. Then search for extension and select the entry install extensions. And here you can browse and install all the extensions you want. As first extension, we want the official Microsoft Python extension. This enables a lot of features like debugging, IntelliSense, Jupyter Notebook support and virtual environment support and much more. For example, if we now have a file with a .py ending, we automatically get support from the editor. If we start typing, we see suggestions for auto completion. When we hover over functions, we get hints from the documentation and we can select the Python interpreter that we want. Here you can see that I can select from all the different virtual environments I have on my machine. The next extension is called Python doc string, which automatically generates doc strings for Python functions. Having a good code documentation is very important and a lot of developers are neglecting this. I know writing docs is not the most fun part, but this extension makes it a little bit easier. I recommend to implement the function first and then apply the autodox because then it includes possible return values. So here we write a function with some arguments and a return value. And now at the beginning of the function, you can type three double quotation marks and then hit enter. This generates a nice doc string and we can easily fill out the missing parts. We can type a description first and then by pressing tab, we can jump to the next part that needs information. As you can see, all the missing parts are highlighted so we can fill out the information for the arguments and then the information for the return value. The third extension is called Python indent. It's a really small plugin that has the simple effect of automatically applying correct code indentation. So here you can see when we are writing longer code and hit enter, we automatically get the correct indentation in the new line. So it's nothing more than that, but this extension actually saves me a lot of time. The next extension is called Code Runner. A lot of you have asked me how I get the Python output without running the file in the terminal myself. And here is the answer. With this extension, we can write code. And then when we want to test it, we can press Ctrl, Alt and N. This will run the code and open up the output window. So here we can see the print statement of our code. Of course, you can also go to the terminal and run the file manually by typing Python and then the name of the file. But with the code runner, it's a lot simpler and it's especially useful when I'm recording a tutorial for you guys. The last extension I'm using is for linting support. A linter is a tool that analyzes source code and flags, for example, programming errors, bugs and stylistic errors. The linter tool is actually not installed via the extension library, but you have to add it to your Python packages with a package manager. VS Code also offers the ability to select a linter. So again, you can open the command palette by pressing command shift P or control shift P on Windows and then search for select linter. Here you can choose between the different linter and I recommend using either flake 8 or pylint, which I think are the most popular ones. So here I choose flake 8 and now I get a warning that it is not yet installed. So I can go ahead and click on install. This will install the flake 8 package via pip. And note that we have to install this separately for each of the virtual environments we are using. 
Of course, you can also install it yourself by selecting the terminal and then type in pip install flake 8. And now if we start writing code and make programming errors or don't conform to the style guide, we see orange or red hints. We can then hover over the hint and see what is wrong. So here we have to include a space before we start our comment message. Other typical examples are unused local variables like here or also real programming errors like if we try to use a variable before we assign it or if we have unused import statements. These are just a few examples but it basically helps me to reduce my errors while I'm still writing code and it also guarantees that I conform to the style guide. Now as last thing I want to show you the color theme I'm using. This is called Night Owl and it's a beautiful dark theme. Color themes can also be installed via the extension library and then you have to activate it and set it as current theme. So yeah, that's my setup. It's nothing fancy, but it works for me. And please let me know in the comments which extensions you are using. I would be happy to hear about your setup. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. This helps me a lot. So see you next time. Bye.